Hello, good morning. Am I audible, Shelby? Yes, you're audible. Are you the speaker? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. So, I think you know the topic, right? Like. Yes, it's covalent and induced with talking. Thank you. Right. Okay.
Good morning and welcome everyone for today's session of Indian webinar series Introduction to Computational Drug Design co-organized by Shorting and PCI. I'm Shelvia and I'll be your host today. Uh, I would like to take a moment to thank our collaborators for your support of, for this event. Um, today we have another demo session and induced with docking and covalent docking. Um, if you have any questions during the course of this presentation, you can uh, drop your queries in the chat section of YouTube link, and we will have a Q&A session at the end of the session uh, to answer your queries. Uh, without further ado, I would like to invite our speaker, uh, Dr. Vinod. Uh, yeah, thank you, yeah. Shelvia. So let me just uh, try to share my screen and... Uh, hope you can see my screen now. Yes. Place it in presentation mode and get started. Is it fine? Yes, it's fine. Okay, thank you. Uh, so very good morning to everyone. Thanks for joining for uh, today's uh, demo. And I'll be talking and I'll be uh, giving a demo on induced fit docking and the covalent docking. I have uh, two uh, case studies on induced fit docking and I'll be covering one on covalent docking. So how it is and what are the uh, difficulties we face and when we need to use it. Uh, and uh, for the theory and presentation, I would request the viewer to check for uh, this YouTube uh, uh, video with this topic, virtual screening to prioritizing the molecules and need for flexible docking and covalent docking. The second half has my presentation where I have covered the complete theory uh, on uh, covalent docking and induced fit docking. Uh, so please, I request you uh, to go through this. And uh, what would be my consideration is just to get started with we have induced fit docking, right? So I think I clearly mentioned it in my previous session that induced fit docking is nothing but inducing flexibility in the binding site. And why you need to do this? I clearly told you the various scenarios like uh, when especially you have an active molecule or a molecule that is well known to be active and uh, the crystallographic structure is not able to accommodate and you have uh, uh, various flexibility criteria in your uh, receptor, or you want to induce uh, different uh, loop refinements, then IFD is a good choice. So because it simultaneously performs glide molecular docking and prime loop refinement in a stepwise workflow. Uh, so as, I, as this all uh, sessions are specific to demo, uh, so I will uh, talk more on demo. The first case study I would be exploring is uh, induced fit scenario of a DFG loop in MAP kinase. So MAP kinase has this tricky DFG in and out motif. And there are like, this is just an example. So different uh, uh, conformation, active form, inactive form, certain selective uh, inhibitors are better than the other. Uh, so let me just show you my Mastro. Hope you can see my Mastro and then we'll continue. So here you have the Mastro, which I have launched. And uh, the first thing that you need to do anytime, whenever you work, you have to change your directory. The change directory and uh, I have this folder specifically dedicated for the demo. And uh, now, I'll just explain you the problem. The problem is right now I have is, uh, let me just open that project and uh, it would be easy. It is a uh, file. I have saved everything in a project. So here is a project. And uh, this is a ligand that is uh, one KV1. You can see this is the molecule that you have in the workspace. Uh, let me show you the crystallographic structure of this. This is one K KV1 molecule. Okay, It's in raw form, unprepared form. What are the problems you have? One among the problems that we face right now, it is like, uh, obviously, you can perform protein preparation with that. 
to fix all the problems but let me just show you like what is the problem currently the major problem uh, which is uh, the brakes if you notice here there is a options to activate the chain brakes and you can see that chain brake is in the main region of dfg motif it has a bound ligand and this dfg motif is very very critical so you can see this is the location and here is a gap like you can see the residue is uh, here it is 170 and here it is 184 so there are missing amino acids here and uh, what you need to do is you need to perform protein preparation completely to remove that problem and uh, you can get the structure like this but my understanding is okay let me take this ligand and try to perform induced fit docking with another map kinase uh, bound inhibitor that is 1a9u this is a molecule that is already bound and i have already prepared this does not have any gap you notice this does not have any gap you can see clearly this is a molecule this is a molecule and uh, it doesn't shows any gap in between you can't see any breaks if you see a break you can see red and blue color there so you need to prepare the structure fully here is the option for uh, seeing the structure which is completely prepared so how do you know whether your structure is prepared or not usually in strodinger uh, whichever has the energy parameters like if you see in project table there are uh, energy parameters that are that shows you whether it is prepared or not in property you can check i can show you if you want so we have impact so you can see the energy parameters so that means this structure is prepared uh and uh, now as i said so you don't take a lot of molecule so it's very clear that i shall be taking 1 kv1 and uh, my objective is to dock this against 1 a9u okay which is also prepared now what is the benefit of doing this okay uh, the main ideology is to explore this uh, dfg motif which i was referring to this motif has dfg in an out conformation so i will show you that but before that let me show you how to set up the calculations so you need to select the ligand of your choice and include the protein of interest okay so what you will do you will go to task browse and we have induced fit docking so there is a much advanced method as ifd md as i told you in the previous presentation but we will purely focus on induced fit docking the first thing that i need to do is i need to mention the ligands to be docked in the project table selected entry here i have mentioned so you can now notice here it is selected the protein only is included in the bottom also you can see the status one selected and one included there are two modes of uh ifd one is uh, uh, standard protocol and other is extended sampling protocol extended sampling has the tendency to give a uh, close to 80 poses and the standard has tendency to give 20 poses uh if you notice when i go for extended the steps are predefined we don't have to customize everything but let me show you the standard protocol i clearly told you that it's a combination of two products uh and uh, that is between glide and prime okay so here i have to define the receptor let me try to define the receptor whenever you have structure in the workspace just double click on preset so that you can see the ligand clearly the ligand is visible now and once the ligand is visible 
now i can mention the grid centroid so that you can do by clicking here now the grid is defined now what it will consider is all the loops that uh, uh, lies within the grid it is going to perform loop sampling and simultaneously docking of that in case you don't have uh, the centroid of the workspace ligand there are options for specifying the residues so how you can identify the specific residues you can go for site map site map will evaluate all the possible binding site and then it will give you the binding site residues don't give individual biased residues give residues of the complete pocket then the grid centroid would be much better than when you give individual residues of your interest because molecule need to bind to the receptor pocket and interact with your residue it doesn't mean that you have to force it to interact with your residue uh, the problem comes when you perform md that's a reason many of the molecules uh, end up not being stable in the binding site pocket if your residue specify residue is not properly the centroid of interest uh, then you can mention whatever constraints you would like to have uh, we can mention the conformation sampling of your ligands and here you can perform specific uh, uh, trimming by using site chains or constraint refinement and here is the options for specifying the loop of interest for loop refinements also so you can specify which loop so you want to refine otherwise by default it will sample all the loops in the binding uh, grid uh, so that is the reason it takes long time and which residue you don't want to move also can be specified the glide redocking currently you can see there is sp option extra position option and uh, simultaneously you have options for writing the xp descriptor information also okay so this is all set i gave you many things but let me just keep it as simple as possible i will reset and then redo this setup so as i said i need the protein of interest which is purely prepared already and the second is the ligand of interest so ligand to be docked i will mention here i will extend it and i will pick the ligand that's how easy it is so when you go for your job run you can distribute it into multiple processor like i can give here eight and eight here so when i hit run then the calculation will be done and it is going to give me the output so that's how easy it is to launch a induced fit docking now let us try to analyze the results i have generated more conformers so that you get better view and understanding on this receptor now if you notice this is the output you get different complexes which is been sampled right there are so many posers now i will try to play it as a movie so that i get a better view let me try to do that so here is an option for single direction and then when i play this please notice that there is some movement in the binding site because the algorithm is bound to do this right i clearly told you it will do perform loop sampling in the binding site and you will be able to visualize the flexibility of the ligand molecule inside the receptor so this is much accurate than our molecular docking approach but it is computationally intensive and costly so that is the reason we don't we don't use ifd for virtual screening okay so how do you analyze it the first thing that is very famous with industry is the ifd score ifd score uh, you can see it in project table also or else you can see it in the entry list also by specifying here the custom properties to show now the value should be as negative as possible this is going to be the sum of uh, prime energy and the docking score and all that uh, but 
you should not just consider the top post it's not about that it's to consider the top 10 or 20 poses simultaneously now how do i analyze the analysis is like to see the consistency of the pose and notice what are the changes that happens now when you see here here is your dfg motif like how i i will show you here is your dfg motif like if i just pick any one residue you could see in the sequence viewer that is selected see here it is selected now to select the complete dfg motif and visualize them what you can do you can come to define and then just say selection because i have included the top 10 poses and once i do that when i say okay you could let me just see a uh, selection and uh, residue number and okay so now you could see the complete batch of residues of dfg motif is visible can you see here okay just to visualize only the ribbon view i will hide everything else okay so i have hidden everything else so clearly you can see the in and out conformation of your protein so how this molecule is available in the dfg in and out motif is something of my interest because now i can see what kind of consistent interaction it holds so this then poses when i add the ligand molecule or the surrounding amino acids just double click on here and you can see the complete surrounding amino acids and there is huge flexibility in the binding pocket so whenever you analyze ifd poses it's not just one pose it's not just top pose it is about consistency like out of 10 poses what are the frequent interaction that has occurred how you can visualize that it looks lot of interactions right so you will notice now where are the frequent interactions you can see the web of yellow uh, dotted lines and which residue is frequently interacting in which location if it is li little difficult i'm just removing the non polar hydrogens so here you see so that is the reason you can see the loop movements and also the conformations of the ligand i know it is little difficult to analyze in this way so that is the reason we go for step that is fingerprint analysis of the complexes so you have to go here and in this you need to mention select the top poses and select this option receptor ligand complexes in talking already you have seen this seen this panel but there is a option separately and if you hit generate fingerprints then you can see the matrix of interactions so here you will be able to visualize what are the consistent interactions that are available at one go we will be able to conclude like okay this molecule is making this consistent interactions the other thing that many of uh, the research scholar do is take the top pose and go for uh, uh, molecular dynamics and even you can calculate via script the binding energy of all these poses that are generated from induced fit docking you can also perform uh, enrichment like ensemble uh, docking because these are the various conformers of the receptor right there is a concept of ensemble docking and ensemble docking is done 
on various conformers of a single protein so that also you can perform so that's how you induce the flexibility in the binding pocket and if i have to show you what is the difference between the site like in case okay we know you have done docking now i can see here it is 1a 9u and this is 1kv1 so what is the difference it has caused what is the change in the binding site so that can be done by using site map site map is a nice tool to evaluate either a single binding site or you can identify the various binding sites in the complete pocket now what you will do is you will try to pick the single binding site just go and pick the ligand molecule and it is going to evaluate this binding site for you and now i have done for 1 kv1 the binding site analysis this is the outcome i have got and after ifd so this is ifd results and this is uh, this is before ifd if you see these are the two results you can notice here so this is before ifd quite exposed and you see here this is after ifd and if i try to show you in a tile view this is how it looks you can see clearly and it has a break if you remember it had a break and after ifd you can see your pocket is well conserved and you, your virtual screening will have better enrichment so that's how ifd need to be taken care now i have a one more example i will just show you that to the second example what i have is cdk2 receptor induced fit effects so this is a state forward case i'll open that project that is cdk2 ifd and you will notice like this is the the input receptor cdk2 okay so here is a bound ligand already you can see the ligand how it is bound and i will take the ligand from cdk to 1 ke8 so this is much uh, you can see much bigger uh, molecule right and uh, it is different than this molecule different heterocyclic nucleus induces different conformation inside the binding pocket and our our goal is to identify bioactive conformation of the protein ligand complex so you should not get confused with uh, uh, global minima conformations or local minima conformations i'm talking about that complex that is in bioactive form so that is going to help us in finding out new molecules new and better and high affinity molecules so here is your target uh, receptor with uh, 1k8 and uh, once i do what i showed you right in the induced fit docking pause and here is your induced fit docking i need to do the same way what i did so i'm not going to repeat that and uh, the output that what you are going to get looks something like this so you can see the induced fit scenario of this molecule and note down what are the consistent interactions of this molecule against uh, different poses of ifd again i said in case if you are planning to do molecular dynamics after ifd okay so this flexibility to attain 
or loop movements to attain in MD, you need to run in a very long stimulation. So in prime, the benefit will be the loop confirmation is specifically done. So uh, the stability uh, that it attains in MD would be much, much easier. And let me try to show the similar analysis of shift of how it looks. And here is your consistent interactions. So if you see whichever the consistent interactions are there, you need to note it down and you need to mention that like these are the frequent interactions that need to be taken care. Whenever I keep my cursor, you can see in the here, the interaction residues are mentioned. So this is any contacts you can specifically get interested with H1 donor or acceptor and all that and decide, okay, these are the critical interactions that I need to focus. So this is the second example. So that's how you need to use induced fit docking. And I will move forward down and let me show, go to the next topic, covalent docking. Okay, so drugs that forms a covalent attachment to the target, again, it uses both the products, that is uh, enzyme plus inhibitor, initially forms a non-covalent complex. And if the receptor has the tendency to make that interaction, then obviously it will form a covalent bond. So not all receptors tend to form this kind of covalent bond. Now, if you notice, the shallow binding site will be used and uh, the receptors should have the tendency to form this. And usually tyrosine, threonine and cysteine are the ones that forms the covalent bond. Now these are the reactive warheads, some of the reactive warheads that is going to be used. And these are, there are various reactions, well-known reactions. And uh, I'll show you the covalent interface. And let me explain, this is how the covalent bond forms. I'll show you the demo now. So I'm just closing this project. And I open file open project. So here is a project which I have saved. So the receptor is 4XAM. If you notice, it has multiple chains. Now whenever you have multimer, it is okay to retain just a single chain. So I have retained it and I have performed stepwise protein preparation and I got this 4X AM. And if you do preset, you can clearly see where the covalent bond is formed. This is a triazine nitrile warhead, okay? And it forms a, a, a covalent bond with 1625. I think it's visible. So that is the, uh, and I have set off close to eight molecules where you will notice all of them have the same reactive warhead. The library, like it's a small thing that you need to focus is the library of molecule that you use for covalent docking should have same warhead, reactive warheads. So you can see here, triazine nitrile is a reactive warhead I have, and it uh, forms the covalent bond by nitrile addition. Okay, it's a custom reaction. I will show you that. And uh, so here is a receptor before preparation, means I have removed it. The ligand is removed and you can see the cysteine alone. And this is how it looks. In case you want to form, you want to do molecular docking on a, on a covalently bond molecule, it is important that you delete this bond. Okay, you have to delete this bond. And you need to be careful in like how you do this deletion. Okay, so you have to select this 
and come here then there is a option of deleting the bone and then you can perform your normal docking because again this is a frequent question that has been asked from me so that is the reason i had to show this okay so this target is catepsin l inhibitors okay and uh, how do you enumerate a library of your molecules like for example now i need to i have this molecule i need to enumerate a library of molecules from this receptor and how i can do that so for that because you can't take uh, online databases because your reactive warhead is very specific right this reactive warhead need to be and i and if i do a random enumeration or r group enumeration like many of the software has like uh, in this case now i have taken two groups just imagine i have taken these two groups i can go for build add fragments create enumerated entries the problem is the number of synthesizable molecule will drastically go down the practical molecules that that can be synthesized will go down so that is the reason i don't suggest automated enumerations rather than that you need to go for reaction based enumeration so what is the option for reaction based enumeration you have pathfinder and reaction based enumeration so this will take the molecule and just you have to hit load see this is the molecule and you want to retain this right try as a nitrile group because that is your warhead and you have proper literature so what you will do we will just hit generate pathway it is going to give you different mechanism by which it it will generate the reactions in case if you are aware of your reactions then you can use it and you can sketch it you can uh, sketch the pathway and then use it so the reaction library what are the reactions library that are available it's also mentioned here so for covalent inhibitor research this is very very tricky now when i try to build this i will end up in getting lot of molecules can you see here there are close to 999 molecule which i have generated by using this reaction based enumeration and all of them consist of this reactive warhead for my ligand molecule now i i told you i think there are two sets of problem when i have small set of molecules and when i have large number of molecules now what i am going to do is i am going to select this eight molecules and take my fully prepared 4a xm it's very easy to define and perform covalent docking but in many of the other software it's very very difficult so what we need to do is we need to search for cove dock so we have covalent docking so the covalent docking tool name is cove dock and the ligands need to be selected like what you did in the induced feed docking and once you have to pick the the there are two things that you need to pick first is the reactive residue i think i told you this is 1625 here it is so here i have picked the molecule and then you have to pick the centroid of the ligand for the grid now if you do this this is the first setup with respect to the reaction then the second setup is to choose the reaction type so by default schrodinger has many common reactions you can see here but this is a specific reaction and it's very easy to customize your specific covalent interactions i have already customized this nitrile addition so i will take that file 
so it has taken it and evaluated and found the sites for the same it is pretty smart like if i choose some other thing like it will identify whether any specific sites are available or not you can see so you don't have, it's not mandatory to have complete understanding on your reaction automatically your reaction library if if that has sites then it can be taken so i'm taking a custom file i told you so it is going to show me this reaction now the next thing is i'm not going to use any core or constraint or torsional constraint next is docking the there are two modes one is post prediction and next is virtual screening so post prediction is good when you have handful of molecules like in this case i have eight molecules but if you are planning to dock this 999 molecules then you need to change it to virtual screen mode so it will automatically analyze the complete molecules 999 and when you hit run your covalent docking can be launched so once that is done you will see the result so these are the again it like ifd you get various uh, outcomes like you can see the various uh, poses that is covalently bond you can see the complete poses for a better view i just set it up you can see here is the view of the ligand molecules and how it is bound what are the interaction it holds and uh, the molecules are usually by means of uh, a score called as co c top score okay there is something called a c dot affinity and by that we decide whether the molecule is good or bad okay, let me import it and Show it to you. So there is a out file. This is how the files are generated. There is a out file that get generated. And once you are done, I will show you in project table. You can you see here? C doc affinity is visible. so you will get the score the more negative will be the best for your design so according to the current research this molecule has a better tendency to form the covalent bond so that's how you need to work on different uh, uh, covalent inhibitors that that was the demo on catepsin l covalent inhibitors and advanced options as i said in uh, covalent uh, inhibition design if you want to rank order you can use fep plus covalent inhibitors so the concept is like it will take the ligand a in peptide and ligand b in peptide and then ligand a in complex then ligand b in complex and it will perform free energy perturbation so those options are available but it's again specifically for high computing resource and uh, the license is specifically available only for commercials so that's all what i plan for today uh, i'm ready for any questions thank you uh thank you for the presentation uh, we have received one question um yeah. as a reminder if you have more questions please add them to the youtube link and we'll uh, add them to our questions um so the question is in what cases do we consider ifd as compared to molecular docking yeah. so as i said i think this was uh, discussed in the previous session like when you have a homology modeled protein then you need to perform ifd when you have a active molecule and you don't have crystallographic or induced fit scenario 
because every molecule will have an induced fit scenario or a crystal structure that does not have bound bound ligand so you need to dock the highly active molecule and induce its pocket so that it opens up uh before the virtual screening for example i have seen many students working on protein that are not having any bound ligand in that case if literature reported not the crystallographically bound molecule you can perform induced fit docking and if you are planning to like explore the uh, loop conformations in the binding site and uh, see how much flexibility it holds so that in that scenario also you can do induced fit docking means before md also you can do induced fit docking so uh, but otherwise many of them take it directly uh, without analyzing okay in md alone if you try to do it takes long time for such movements to happen thank you for that answer um i don't have any more questions for you for now uh Great. so what i'll do is i'll just quickly move on to the announcements if people have more questions maybe we can come back to yeah thank you shelvia uh, thank you so much Uh, so you need to share your screen is it clear yeah actually i received some more questions for you so i'll just i'll just ask those first okay, okay. um can covalent docking for non enzyme glycation and cross linking be performed yes the options are available but i have not worked on uh, those cases uh, uh but uh, if you are interested you can email us and we can get more details and i'll let you know hey right. uh, so next question is if b factors suggest a flexible residue near binding site is it better to perform standard docking or ift obviously you need to perform ift in the initial case like for example see if the your beta factor is too high indicating that it will be highly flexible what you can do you can take the most active molecule reported okay or uh, or heterocyclic nucleus that is highly active you can probe it and you can see what is the uh, dimension of flexibility it gives and according to that you can perform your virtual screening but you cannot perform virtual screening on uh, uh, induced fit docking so that is the reason you can just do with one or few molecules but uh, for virtual screening you have to perform molecular docking only thank yes. you uh, i think that's all the questions we have um so i'll just quickly move on to the announcements uh so the important thing that i want to let you guys know is about the shodinger online course um this is the last course of this year so if you are interested in taking this course please register uh you have a discount code uh, since you are attending this uh, pci event you are eligible to get a discount code um so the discounted price will be 125 dollars as opposed to 350 dollars for student and um uh, 475 for non students so for both of uh, the categories we have um the discount code and you will only have to pay 125 uh, this offer is valid till end of this year so uh if you want to take soc uh, if you're interested in it or if you want to know anything about it you can write to me as well um so the registration and the payment deadline is october 26 uh the offer will only be valid for this session uh not for any other sessions uh the second thing is uh you must be a lot of you must be still uh, receiving emails from us uh, about the evaluation licenses so if you have uh, already registered uh, or requested the evaluation form uh, please wait we will be sending you emails once we send you email please send us the necessary information and we'll send you the licenses i think a lot of you already received licenses from us um so if you're working on those licenses and if you have some 
uh, doubts and your if you uh, have some questions uh, related to any sessions uh, you can join us for office hours which are every thursdays uh, 4 30 pm to 5 30 pm these are hosted on zoom sessions um, so to get the link of the zoom session you can go to uh, our website page which is uh, slash dd course uh, so this is the website where uh, you will find information about this course in particular um, so you will um, have the information about the link of the office hours there as well um, also uh, if you have any other query any general query about this course uh, you can write to us at ddcourse at schrodinger.com. Um, if you are facing any trouble in installation or uh, any your website account is not active, it's taking more time, you can also write to us uh, on the same email and we'll help you out. Uh, so yes, uh, if you haven't already requested an account and if you do not have a website account, please get one. Um, it is, a, uh, you can request for one at www.schrodinger.com uh, slash request hyphen account. Um, so you will require these account in order to download the software. Um, also to go through the training material that is there on our website. So there are some videos, some old seminars, and you will also get notified for any upcoming event uh, if you have a website account with us. Um, the other thing is if you're interested for the Schrodinger's online course, uh, you, will, you will also need to have an account. Um, uh, some of you are asking about the certificates. Uh, so we, there will be an assessment at the end of this course. Um, so once uh, the course is coming to the end, you will be given information about it, how to take uh, the assessment. And once you qualify, uh, we will be sending you out e-certificates. Uh, so that's all from me. Um, if you have any question, you can always write to us. Please join us for tomorrow's session. Um, Oh, sorry, there's no, there's no session tomorrow. <laughs> okay, please uh, join us Monday. That's our next session. There are no sessions on Saturday, Sundays. All right. Um, so that's all from me. Thank you for joining us today. See you on Monday. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Thanks for the opportunity. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.